This is the story of my new company, Hero Technologies, and how me and my business partner, Mickey Ackerval, created the world's first micro-digestible diaper, basically a diaper that gets eaten eventually by mushrooms. The world is facing a massive plastic crisis. The plastic crisis is so huge that most people don't even realize. I think most of us realize that plastic is an issue, but there's now more plastic by weight than all the weight of every animal on the planet Earth. It's just insane and it's compounding as plastic gets degraded slower and slower. There's also downstream issues, both for the environment and our health in microplastics as those plastics break down. Um, they create microplastics that end up in our water supply, food supply, fishes, and whatnot. And this is obviously a massive problem. So I grew up in a hippie community and I was fairly acutely aware of a lot of the environmental challenges we face, but I still didn't have a solution for plastics. In 2020, my wife, Cora, got pregnant with our firstborn child, Banyan, and we moved to Austin, Texas. And at the same time, was reconnected with someone I had met like almost a decade ago earlier through this community called Cemeteries, and her name was Mickey Ackerval, and she was this very successful serial entrepreneur and super inspiring human, and we both moved to Austin at the same time and we connected. And this was just before Banyan was born, and Mickey shared this vision that she had to create a diaper that would biodegrade by using mushrooms, and she had this, she'd been talking to all these experts, some very famous scientists, and about creating it, but had not gotten traction. She was like, we should do it together because you know a lot of mushrooms, like she's an amazing accomplished entrepreneur, but like didn't know much about mushrooms and she needed someone to help hire the right people. So it was 2019 and on a thinking day, I was sitting there in my room, looking at my window at a tree and I was just like, huh, if breast milk is liquid gold, then baby poop must be fertilizer gold. And as I was thinking about that, I was like, wait a minute, what if the baby poops into the diaper? There could be something that the baby poop fertilizes that can grow, eat the diaper. And then wait a minute, what if you can eventually, the diaper ends up in a landfill and it can start eating plastics and landfills too. It was this big like aha moment. And as I was like, what could eat plastic? I wonder what could it be? Hero, my son, who's two years old, comes running into my room and he points to a book in my nightstand and I pull it out and on page 31, it says, there are certain types of fungi that eat plastics. So as I had this aha moment, I just did so much digging into just the world of mushrooms and just learning about as much as I possibly could and who are the big players in the plastic eating mushroom movement. So then I like scoured truly the whole entire planet. I read research papers, I published papers, and in the addendum asterisk, I found a guy in Pakistan, contacted him. He was, you know, originally someone that we started working with. Then we you know we found someone in Mexico through another contact in Austin through a mycological division of, you know, society of, of, of mushrooms, um, and started working with him. And then I found somebody in the United States who had been working in kind of scaling the mushroom industry for a really long time. In the United States. And finally, I found my partner in tarot when we met. I was first like, mm, I'm good. That's a beautiful idea. I love it. But at the same time, like I'm, I'm busy becoming a new parent and I have my company for Sigmatic that keeps me very busy. Then a few months passes by and Banyan is born and we're changing diapers 10 to 20 times a day. And I'm starting to realize that this is actually a bigger problem than I even figured. Diapers are the number one household plastic waste item. They tend to be the number three waste item overall after like food and clothing or something. And I'm like, oh, this is a stupid problem. Every baby uses thousands of diapers in their lifetime, bigger than the weight of a fully grown elephant. And I was like, there needs to be something with it. At the same time, my wife was like, you're crazy if you don't do this. And I'm like, well, I don't have time like to do this at all. And she was like, well, then you work nights. And that's what we did. And I joined forces with Mickey. Uh, I would work daytime at Four Sigmatic and nighttime, I would try to figure out how can I help her find the right people to can actually build it because I didn't have bandwidth to build in myself. And then I scoured through my network and found amazing PhDs and different scientists and mycologists to 
come solve this problem with us. And it took us three years of trial and error to not just to find the species, but also how to bring it to life. We are here doing our very first review. That's a poop pellet right there. Mushrooms are actually growing all over them. This is crazy. For me, like creating this company is really about a culture shift. It is a frontier business. It's never been done before. There is no manual to create plastic eating mushroom, scalable, technologically advanced company, especially first product being a diaper, which is so highly technical. And so we had to actually create the Ocean's Eleven team of literal interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary, talented people who are such like, like I call them swords for each one of these industry, whether it's a microdegradation expert, biotech expert, whether it's a bioreactor engineer, whether it's a, um, you know, again, like, like true degradation people and, and PhDs are so hard to find, but we literally, again, by the grace of the universe, by the mycelial kingdom grace, we were able to literally put the most dynamic, multidisciplinary team together that we call it the Ocean's Eleven. We're so proud. We literally started with anything is possible and looked at like all the feces, fungal species on earth. And there's, by the way, like more than a million of them, um, supposedly. And we looked at all the science that exists today and we found like 135 species that showed promise. And we tested all of them against the five types of common plastics in diapers. And we found 34 species that performed well. And we've now done extensive research on the best of the best of them. And, but that was not enough because this is a living organism, a fungi that will then grow, but then we can't have it grow on the baby. So we have to solve a way how we can immobilize it so it stays dormant until the right time and the moisture and conditions happen, in this case, pee and poop, and then at that point starts to grow and use plastics as a fuel. So as a team, you know, the things that we figured out how to do was how to immobilize, so basically freeze the mushrooms, how to encapsulate them, so actually put like a little capsule around them, and then how to scale them. So then when the baby poops or pees, they re-wet the 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 bead and then it wakes up and then it starts eating the plastic and the process of figuring that out was such an intensely wild process and i'm so proud of our, our terra and our science team to have figured it out and it's a process where it's a constant evolution and we're in the global experiment of helping solve the global plastic crisis one baby poop, poopy diaper at a time so now we have the species we figure out how to immobilize it now the next task is that we have to produce it there's nobody else producing it so we basically had to create our own supply chain of creating bioreactors like think of like brewing big tanks of beer or growing mushrooms instead of beer and finding these like bioreactor experts that can know how to do it. And nobody's really done that part either. So we had to leverage experts from other fields and bring them together to create them. You would think that the job is done, but no, that's just the hero technology, the, the fungal species that we can then apply to other consumer products. But our first product was a diaper and wipes, and you need to design those too. And you would think it's also simple, but we wanted the diaper to be actually a better diaper than other diapers. We want it to be softer. Um, higher performance or absorb better, not re-wet. There's a lot of technical things. So we scoured the world and found these like top diaper testing uh, experts. We found Eric who helped build Pampers Pure. And we found a manufacturer in Canada that is one of the leading manufacturers. And they normally probably don't work with companies like us and startups, but they were blown away by the mission and the journey we were on. And they're willing to partner us with R&D and we spent a good two years figuring out how to actually create the diaper itself. But what was crazy about this journey with Mickey and the people we hired is that there's like a whole world within diapers. And I think almost no parent is aware of it, but it's such a, like the big diaper is such a shady industry and the amount of greenwashing is insane. And there's all these like better for you brands of diapers that honestly none of them are eco there is no like eco diaper in the world today and there's like one of the leading brands that behaves the more eco has the most amount of plastics you can ever have so it's like 
the most supposedly expensive eco diaper is actually the least eco diaper out there. And then I tried to use these other ones that use these alternative plant-based materials just to find out that the core of the diaper is still the same plastic SAP. And actually the absorption is horrible and they're very expensive. So when I used eco diapers for the first time, I was I felt better about myself, but I then very quickly found out that they performed super poorly within you know, a second of the baby peeing, similar to the uh, cloth diapers, I had to change the baby. And so I actually had to change the baby almost twice the amount using the eco diapers, which are by the way, not eco. They still take, you know, 100 years to decompose in a landfill. And actually bamboo is a harder fiber to break down when you're when you're mixing it with plastic than actual pure plastic diaper. So it's a pure greenwashed bull too. What's interesting is like, we've ended up with a worse diaper with these eco diapers than the normal diaper from an absorption point of view. We ended up with a worse diaper from an ecological point of view. They probably create more microplastics and it's also more expensive. Uh, a lot of diapers are bought on food stamps and it's sadly the case where like affordability is also an issue. Now, almost four years later, we're in a point where we're ready to like launch this product into the world. Um, obviously it's the first generation. It's like, imagine like a Tesla or something like the first Roadster. It's not as good as then following cars, but it works. It proves that you can drive a car, an electric car all over and it, it's awesome. It looks great, works great, it's fast. And the same way with our diaper, it's high performance, very soft, um, a beautiful diaper um, that does the job and so does the fungi. And we're, we're so excited to do more research in the upcoming years for different kinds of purposes, for collecting energy in landfills, to do more ecological uses of the same technology for other consumer plastic products. Because the same, uh, you know, the polyethylene, the polypropylene, the PET, the SAP that are found in um, diapers are also found in most consumer, this, you know, single use plastic items and they're, they're in landfills all over the world. So there's a lot of applications we can use these for later as well. This is just the most incredible kismet aligned project. When I think about starting things or Tushy, there's a lot of like kind of like grinding that had to happen to really change culture, to really get the teams aligned, to really make, make it happen. Whereas with Hero so far, it's been the right people at the right time showing up. The company is named after my son, Hero. Um, Hero happy, my sweet, my, my pride and joy. And he inspired the idea for Hero Technologies for this company. He's one that pointed to the book in my nightstand to actually come up with the idea of plastic eating mushrooms. Like I wouldn't have even thought about it if he didn't come into the room and point to the book. So yeah, it, it has an extra special place in my heart because it's named after Hero. The possibilities are endless. I don't know where this is going. I honestly didn't know where this was going almost four years ago when Mickey invited me to the journey. I just knew that the world needed it and my wife was encouraging me to do it. And I'm so lucky for the people who actually did the work because Mickey and I just put this thing in motion, but the people who actually worked long 60 plus hour work weeks to design it are the true heroes behind Hero Technologies. And obviously all the moms and consumers that helped us co-create this product. It's really this global movement and experiment to figure out how can we use nature to heal nature? And how do we harness nature solve the problems us humans have created as population has increased and technology of various manufacturing has created these novel problems like the plastic crisis. So it's this experiment. I'm glad you're watching this video. Hopefully you can join into the mission one way or the other. I don't know where it's going. That's also kind of the beauty of, of a startup. You're building the plane while trying to fly it. So but I'm excited for the potential and I hope this also inspires other entrepreneurs instead of creating like the next drop shipping Amazon affiliate business, taking that same or an app uh, for social media, taking that same brain power and energy and passion to create actual science and advance actual biology or physics or other forms of actual science in this world and create um, solutions for for the many modern problems we have, not just environmental, but any problem. And I think that would be beautiful. And I hope more and more people will do that as well. Isn't that cool? It's insane, actually. And right now we're at our launch party here in Museum of Ice Cream in Austin, Texas. It's 15 minutes before people start showing up. But if you're 
passionate about this topic or this cause, check out our Kickstarter below and, you know, support in any way or share with your friends. Thanks for joining for this video and I'll hope to see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.